this play. Hoffman to Eli Kramer, who spins away from the defense to score from 20 yards out on a fourth down play. It's 14-0 Kraft. Then linebacker Cruz Johnson caps off a great night with an interception. Johnson brings it back 21 yards for the score. Right wing to one way, 47. So back in 96 was my third year coaching at Breck, um, and it was quite the season. One of the interesting things about that season was it started very similarly um, from a standpoint of um, two days fall practices, um, you know, here on this amazing campus back then we didn't have the field house and that was actually our practice field um, our football practice field um, but the the one thing I do recall when I started here in 94 um, the program coach Thiel was really turning the program around well really talking about the 96 team you have to start out when they're eighth graders you talk about a group of young men who are as cocky as they could possibly be and as eighth graders, they told me that they were going to win a state championship before they left Breck School. Drew Johnson, class of 97, number 50, and I played either right or left guard. Left guard, maybe? And middle linebacker. Ross Hussey, I graduated in 1997 from Breck. I was a part of the 1996 uh, Prep Bowl champions. Uh, my jersey number was 53, and all 170 pounds of me at the time played defensive tackle. Gavin Hoffman, class of 1997, and the starting quarterback for the Breck Mustangs. Eli Kramer, 1997 graduate, 1996 state football champion, number seven, played wide receiver. Well, they were my best friends growing up since fifth grade, so it was a very close group of uh, seniors um, in particular. And we were just oddly a very uh, large in stature, very physical group of guys um, that we kind of stuck out around Breck, it felt like. And so I remember, um, you know, kind of the core of our team being Carl Nelson and Pat Bereka and Drew Johnson, and Mike Busalis, uh, really kind of anchoring um, the lines for us. And then you had guys like Colin Brooks and Eric Anderson and Eli Kramer on the outside um, making plays. John Simmons stepping up. We had a few key underclassmen that really contributed. Regis Eller, John Simmons, Ed Dunn. Uh, it was just a, it was a unique group for Breck, a unique group for the conference at the time. And um, yeah, just a great group of guys that we're still friends uh, to this day. My name is Jason Keen. I graduated from Breck in 1999, and I played center and defensive end on the 96 championship team. So what comes back to me most about the season was the example that the upperclassmen set. Uh, you know, when, when we were freshmen, the team, we had a really down year, and the memory that sticks in my mind most is us losing to Blake at homecoming at home. And that was just a devastating loss for us. And you could definitely tell in the summer when we were working out and, um, you know, when the season started that the, you know, the upperclassmen, specifically the seniors, never wanted to have another season like that again. And so they kind of poured everything that they had into, um, you know, making sure that we could make a run at state that year. So. Uh, that's that. I would say that's what I remember most about that '96 season. Michael Proman, Mike Proman, uh, class of 1999. Um, let's see here. Started off, if you can believe this, right, as a fullback, and uh, I believe an outside linebacker. Number 20, uh, number 20 in your playbook, number one in your heart. 
Well, it certainly uh, probably started the end of 1995, right, where we had a ton of talent and we had a very mediocre record. I think, in fact, we lost in the first game of the section playoffs my freshman year in 1995. We're, we had finished with a record of four and five, totally underachieved. And we looked around the room and it was like, we're way too, we're so much better than this. And you look at that senior class, obviously the ones that really led that resurgence. Um, I mean, you had 20 guys and they were just, you know, lights out, right? In all positions, both sides of the ball. The guys on the team that year were a, uh, were a group who were um, multi-sport athletes, three sport athletes, um, incredibly hard workers, um, understanding that the work they needed to put in out of season was as important as um, the days they showed up at practice. Um, and because they had been playing uh, major roles on the, on the football team um, in their younger years, they were pretty easy to coach uh, that 96 season. Um, and, uh, you know, John Thiel, when talking to him about it, he said uh, it was a group of guys that made us look pretty good as coaches and made coaching easy. I think the program obviously has had a, had a great tradition. Um, and, and I think what that 96 group did um, for the underclassmen and for the future of football, um, and we talked about this as a coaching staff, they didn't wait around for their turn. Um, so to speak, you know, a lot of times these kids, when they get out of, in a program and they get placed on a team as an underclassman, they're kind of waiting around until they're seniors um, to take their shot. And I think this group of 96, well, I know this group of, of, of grad, 97 grads that won the state championship in 96, they were out there as sophomores taking over, taking on starting positions and, and knocking guys out and, and taking over their position. Um, and I think that that's what we gained um, as a football program in the next you know, five to 10 years was don't wait around. Um, um, go, you know, if you want it, you gotta go get it. And this, that group of seniors um, from that 96 state championship, that's where it started. And uh, I think that's one of their strongest legacies that they left on the, uh, on the football program. Uh, they pushed me to get better. Uh, so it was a tremendous amount of fun to watch the growth uh, of this group. And it really changed part of my co co coaching philosophy. My original coaching philosophy, I think, was very typical. I controlled everything. Uh, they had to listen to me and just go out and play and do what I tell you. Uh, by the time we're finished, Gavin's calling his own plays. The offensive line is calling their own line calls. They're making changes on the field. Uh, and it just allowed me to let them uh, play football. And it made me a teacher of football, not just a coordinator of it, but it allowed me to become a teacher. And my goal changed from just producing a good football team to producing young men who understood the game of football and could really coach themselves. And they were dedicated. They demanded from each other. Uh, there were 22 freshmen when they were freshmen. There were 22 seniors four years later. Uh, all the same group of guys. They stuck together. They worked hard. And they really pushed each other. Uh, it became very easy to coach. They made me a good coach. So the leaders were, of course, you know, our captains. Um, but, you know, some names that come to mind are, you know, Drew Johnson, Pat Vareka, Mike Busalis, and Carl Nelson. Um, you know, <laughs> off camera, we were talking a little bit about some of the characters. And if you, um, you know, ever met any of those people, they all had really unique personalities and really brought a lot to a team. Um, you know, of course, uh, you know, Gavin Hoffman was our star quarterback, but he wasn't as, you know, vocal of a leader. He, he talked when he needed to, but um, those guys that I, uh, you know, that I mentioned before uh, were, you know, they kept everybody laughing. Um, they, you know, kept the intensity up. 
and um, you know they were they were just a lot of fun to play with. Well, um, our captain Drew Johnson, uh, he he was he was the one that kept us in line, I think, more than anybody else. Uh, and and again, I think if, the thing about football too is you do have to uh, be a unit, or else it's all going to you know go downhill. So the one thing I think we all that worked for us is that we understood that that we we had to get do our jobs. So I, we were all kind of together on that. But there were definitely some players, as, as there always are. Uh, Carl Nelson, Pat Vareca, that, you know, they like to have a little more fun out there. Okay, so I had a rule that I don't swear. And they're young men, and they're not going to swear because one of the reasons why you get an education is to be able to communicate with others without offending them. So we had a no swear rule, and every time somebody swore, the entire team had to do 25 push-ups. Well, there was one young man on the team, he'll remain nameless, but he was an offensive tackle and defensive lineman who just could not control himself. And so after the first week of practice, we had a tradition of then going in the pool after that practice uh, on that first Saturday. We'd go in the pool, relax, have a good time. At that time, not only had we already done somewhere close to 1,000 push-ups, they owed me 750 more. So the two captains, uh, Mike Rusalis and Drew Johnson, came to me and said, how can we work these off? And I said, well, we can start counting now. And you can do them on the pool deck. And they said, what if everybody jumps off the diving board and just does something funny coming off the diving board? And I said, as long as it's appropriate, it's not going to offend anybody, let's do it. Because I fully realized they can't do another 750. So everybody goes off the board and off the board, and the last person left is Vangy. The two captains swim out into the pool. And I, of course, go a little crazy. Get out of there. Get out of his way. Move it. And Drew turned to me and said, trust us. And Vang jumped off that board and went directly to the bottom of the pool. He couldn't swim. They pulled him out of the pool. The team went absolutely crazy. And that was the type of young man he was, that he was a member of this team, he was part of this family, and he was going to do what everybody else did. But it kind of signified what that group was all about and the culture they were then bringing to our football program. So the coaches, it's really uh, John Thiel at, at the start. Um, uh, he, he was the perfect coach for that group of guys. And, and looking back on it, um, really progressive in his approach. I remember before the season, he sat down with the seniors and said, this is your team and asked us for feedback on basically the entire program, how we wanted practices to be run, did we want new helmets and uniforms for that year? He started letting us call uh, the plays on offense. He would let Drew and Jesse Dahani on defense uh, call plays. And so really a, a guy who was extremely mature and put his ego aside as a coach and, and made the team not his team, but our team. And so really that state championship comes down to John Thiel, in, in my opinion. Um, just in terms of getting the most out of us and almost not getting in the way. I also think that uh, one of the important things about that team was the way Coach Thiel prepped them um, in, the, in the years before, the seasons before. Um, I often, when people ask me about John Thiel, my comment about John Thiel in regards to football is that man has forgotten more football than I'll ever know. Well, I think when you talk about our coaching staff, you have to start out with Brian Schauer. Uh, Brian Schauer, uh, I came from McAllister College to, to Breck, and Brian had just graduated from McAllister, and he came with me. He was an off offensive lineman at Mac and was a tremendous player there, and he really created a culture on our offensive line that was unique. Uh, it was tough. They were knowledgeable about the game of football. Uh, and they stuck together no matter what. Coach B, who's still there, you know, is, is running uh, our defense. Uh, 
and really he's young at that time and he's got great energy and he's great with the kids. And so we have Dan DeHaan, he's working with our, def uh, our, our defensive backs and our offensive backs, longtime teacher. Rick Joseph, who came with me from McAllister, he was a coach at McAllister and he decided that he wanted to coach on the high school level. And he came and he was a character. He had some sayings that to this day, I still don't understand. But for some reason, the kids understood it. They, they loved it and they went forward. So we had some good characters there uh, to go with some very good characters on the, on the field. It goes back to the relationships. It goes back to the middle school. And, and I think, again, you know, even though Robin Fonda wasn't on that 96 staff, he was right there at the Metrodome on the sidelines where he should be because he's just as responsible for, for what happened than anything else. The coaches on the team, I, I distinctly remember a number of them. I mean, they were great. Uh, Coach Steele, he, uh, he was kind of like a dad figure to us and, and really would preach about how to, how to be the, uh, the best man you could be. And I think a lot of with football, that's a good characteristic of, of football is that there's how you conduct yourselves on the field and off the field. That was a big part of, of football. You know, we're not going to wear hats. We're going to look each other in the eyes and shake hands. Those kind of simple things. And, um, you know, if you ever got wind that you, you weren't being a gentleman off the field, you probably wouldn't be on the field. The coaching was exceptional. The coaching was tough, uh, it was supportive, it was, they wanted us to be able to win. You could feel it as a person in the locker room that year. So, you know, what, what I remember most about the playoffs was probably our, um, uh, the, the first game of state before we got to the prep bowl. Um, it was absolutely freezing cold that day. And, um, you know, it was it was just a really, really bad Minnesota, you know, early winter in, in, in November. And so, you know, normally we would, um, you know, we would kind of huddle in the end zone at, during halftime. But this time we had a bus on the side of the stadium uh, that was a heated bus. And so, you know, I, re I remember that game um, kind of like it was yesterday. Uh, you know, it was it was a, it was a team from upstate. And, um, you know, they had they, they, they had a great reputation, but, um, you know, we 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 ended up victorious. Well, I, I do think the Breckenridge game, uh, which I believe was a semifinal game, they had they were a state title team. They had been there before they had done it. Uh, they were an awesome football team. Uh, so we went in knowing that we had to play at our absolute best. And that was a battle the entire game and it made it even harder when Gavin suffered a th deep thigh bruise and during the game and Gavin was never a nifty quarterback he was never going to run the ball very far but now with a deep thigh bruise uh, he became very stationary and so our line had to step it up our backs had to step it up our receivers had to make sure they were doing the right route at the right time uh, and so that we came out of that game a little bit bruised and battered. And then we were lucky. There was a two week break between the semifinals and finals. The only time in the state history that that happened. And it, it gave Gavin time to heal. And though he wasn't a hundred percent for the state championship without that week, I'm not sure he could have even played the week before. So we walk into the state championship game and I was pretty confident that we had defeated two tremendous teams in the quarterfinals and the semifinals. I thought our kids knew how good they were then. Uh, they believed in themselves. They believed in each other. And I think they were just ready to play. And I think back to that season, the feeling is about the camaraderie of the team, but the actual memory, the visuals are from playing in the dome, right? Um, I, I would wonder if that's true, maybe of the other people you talk to as well. We'll see little things like um, getting on the bus from school and riding a nice bus. Usually we're taking, I think we usually took school buses to our away games, but we got a nice coach bus for this. So even little things like that. Right? Joining us on the bus that day was a guy named Patrick Royce, which I think everybody knows. He just wanted to tag along and, and write a little uh, story about the Breck football team. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> This guy doesn't have anything better to do. I mean, really? 
once we got to the dome, just the experience of going to the dome, anything like a win was just sort of icing on the cake. I think it was getting there was kind of the goal, to be honest with you. And um, it was just a really neat uh, – the anticipation of that game was um, – the most of any other game that entire season, regardless of a rivalry or the homecoming game, but getting to play in the dome was a really big deal to us at the time. Uh, so what I remember most about the, uh, you know, the championship game was just how excited everybody was to be in the dome and to, um, and to travel down there as a team. And then, you know, I think the, the momentum sort of shifted uh, ar around the time we got maybe our second, um, you know, interception, um, I'm not sure if anyone else has told you this, but I think it still holds that we hold the um, the state record for interceptions in a championship game. I believe the number is six. Yeah, uh, Van Yee Yang's um, interception to set the state record at the end of the game was a um, – that was just a really neat experience. Um, he was a guy that stuck with the program all four years was really a well-liked guy on the team and for him to get some playing time at the end of that game and then set the record was uh kind of the by far the most um, memorable of that game i can't frankly even remember any other plays other than that one i don't remember the actual moment of winning we uh, as i mentioned we were in control of the game so you know in in, in the, there are those sporting events where you know you're going to win before the clock runs out this was one of those games. We weren't in, they were a good opponent as I remember, but we were ahead most of the game as a score 24 seven would indicate. I think we went up in the first half, right? So I don't remember the moment of the clock running out or sort of like, oh, now we know we're gonna win. But I do remember the feeling of being on the field after the fact, uh, getting this trophy handed to our captains, Drew Johnson, I honestly can't remember other captains, but I know there were two other fantastic captains of that team. Uh, getting this trophy and sitting down, especially in a group of seniors, there were a lot of seniors that year. It was part of the reason I think the team had the chance to be good. We had a lot of um, experienced talent. And I read, there's a picture of that group of seniors, maybe 15 or 16 strong, holding that trophy, sweaty from the wind. That's the thing I remember. I still couldn't believe that we had won it until days after. And so afterwards, I still, I still remember um, seeing Drew Johnson and some of the other seniors right after and all of us hugging and, and holding the state championship trophy and taking the photos of it with all the seniors. Um, one of my favorite photos that I still have is all of us seniors with that trophy, um, with the crowd in the background and just that moment. So it, it was special. REC does a great job back then and I believe now of, of coming together as a community and really supporting all things BREC. And it was pretty neat to see um, your students and your friends and, and folks that probably wouldn't normally uh, get excited for a football game all get very excited for this because, hey, Breck, it, Breck is being represented and Breck is doing something that it hasn't done before. And so to me, that was really special. And to be able to, to then um, convert and, and, and end up winning and, uh, and having that pride, that was, that was great. So that did make it more special because of how much the community was involved and how much uh, folks really uh, kind of stepped up to support us throughout the whole uh, run that we were able to go on. How do I think about it now? I definitely have a, a better appreciation for what we accomplished. You know, when you're living in the moment, it feels like kind of just another game or we had had some success in hockey and had won the conference and the sections in, in that sport. So a lot of these games, at the time just felt like kind of another win and we'd go about our business, move on to the next sport. But as time goes on and you look back, it, it was a really unique accomplishment. Um, you know, Breck had never, I don't even think we had made it to the state tournament or it had been forever before we had even had any success in the playoffs. So it just wasn't on anyone's radar. And so to look back at being kind of the first program to push through that barrier for the uh, football program was a, it's really special to look back on. How did I feel doing it at Breck? You know, it it was really just about being with your friends and a great group of guys that, uh, you know, you grew up with and um, went through a lot with that, uh, to be honest, it was just sharing that moment with a great group of friends. Um, I, I think it was just a, um, you know, it was a great time 
to, you know, to be at Breck, to be on the football team during that time. I mean, you know, the history of Breck football had not been good, but, you know, the fact that we got sort of this um, influx of, you know, whether it was talent uh, for, you know, our small school football. I mean, these guys, not, we, although we did have a couple uh, NFL guys, most of these guys were just high school football players, but um, you know, what they were able to get out of it, um, I think was, uh, you know, was really special. And then, you know, when I look at my class um, as experiencing that as sophomores, um, you know, sort of set a standard, you know, you hear these, you know, different college teams like University of Miami and other places where a certain standard was set. And then, you know, and, and, and then, you know, it was up to the next sort of generation or the next group of guys to follow that up. Um, you know, what, it's funny. We're, we're uh, the graduates of 1997 are now about 42. I'm 42. I think I was on the younger side. So like 42, 43. It feels like a long time ago, you know, 40, for 25 years it's been since state championship. It feels like a long time. A lot happens during that time that is, you know, people go in their separate ways, right? Um, and another thing that that conjures up for me is the world has changed a lot in the last 25 years in terms of communication, uh, the ability to stay in touch with, you know, all the ways people communicate these days. So even the question of how we uh, have stayed in touch, I think has evolved a lot during that time. First 10 years, I didn't really talk to people too much about it. People are off at college, they're graduating, getting into work, all that kind of thing. It's, it's not, it's not, um, it's almost like it's not worth talking about a lot yet. But then in the last few years, you started hearing from people, hey, remember that, remember that season, right? Uh, people that you may be in really close touch with, like the few I mentioned, but also the people farther down the line, so to speak, um, who were, you know, the bond that you shared was purely, or, or let's say was a lot more related to sharing this moment. Yeah, I mean, I, I was a lifer at Brock. I think you look back at that, that 96 team, and most of those guys, these are guys who were here in preschool, kindergarten, right? And, and so uh, I remember going to the homecoming games as, as a, a lower schooler, uh, and, and we sucked. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> Breck football, it, it wasn't you know anything to phone home about any you know really in the in the 80s or even the early 90s, some really talented guys, but for whatever reason like you know maybe they're playing against great talent, but you know teams just didn't seem to break through, and that's what made this even more special, right? Is that you know you could see the challenges and you could be like I want to be part of that solution. Yeah, it, it was a good accomplishment and. I think kind of, you know, punctuated in that the same group of guys is still pretty close. And I know, you know, just from people on the team, then, you know, we have kids at Breck now. Um, a group of us got together over the Thanksgiving holiday that was on the team. So, you know, it, it was, you know, it wasn't, uh, you know, win and scatter. It was, we were friends before, we played together before. And then, you know, it, I think, it, if anything, just kind of cemented everything about being friends, you know, well after Breck among the kind of core senior group. And uh, that, yeah, I think that means a lot to me having those, you know, relationships. And I, you know, hope the same for, you know, my two boys that are at Breck now, if they can be hanging out in 20 years with people they played sports with at Breck uh, or any activity at Breck. Oh, that's awesome, and that's uh, something I really value. Well, I think one of the things that proved to everybody is that our athletic program, no matter what sport it was, could be successful. I think when I came in 89, I stood in front of the parents and students at our first fall uh, preseason meeting and said to them that I don't count wins and losses. What I want to do is develop young men and women that we're going to take the boys and girls at Breck School, and by the time they graduate, we want outstanding young men and women. And I'll be proud of our athletic program if when they walk across that stage and pick up their diploma, I'm proud of the person they are. And they're ready to go into our society and be beneficial and successful citizens in our community. If we take care of the little things, if we play hard, if we work hard, if we're respectful, if we're responsible, 
if we're honest with ourselves and honest with our teammates and we're sportsmen, the winning will take care of itself and our program will be successful. And lo and behold, it became true. And that 96, 97 school year in many sports was a change year. Uh, and so I think it became successful, not only in football, but it went across the board because if Brett could win in football, the sport that just seven years earlier, they talked about dropping, then we can be successful in any sport. And here the academic school, the kids with the SAT score could be successful and beat anybody as they stepped out on the field and they could represent their community with a lot of pride. And I think when we went out into the dome for that championship game and you realized how many people were there, I mean, I thought we would play in front of, well, if we could get four or 5,000 people on our side of the field, I thought, man, that would be awesome for Breck. Afterwards, the guy from the high school league thought there was 15,000 people on our side of the field. So I think our kids learned that our community were, had a lot of pride in what was being accomplished and was fully supportive of them, that they weren't alone in this endeavor, that they were, the whole community had come together. But just good guys, and and when they come back, we don't we don't see them enough back on campus nowadays, and I hope that that changes. We're getting a few of them now to bring their own kids here to Breck, and uh, um, I hope that continues because uh, that is a that's a really special group um, from the coaching staff all the way through um, to all the players, and uh, um, they're they're just uh, they are Breck. Um, they were then and they still are today and, and Breck is fortunate that they were here because uh, they helped uh, lay the path for a lot of people here. Well, I just know that I love them all. I miss them. We had a great time. They may be a better person, better coach. So they'll always be with me. Nineteen ninety six state champs, Breck twenty four, Wyndham seven, one to a twelve and two that year. Speaking of uh, going to the dome, I know I'm not the only one with the shirt left from the team. I hope you all, all can still fit into your shirt. There were some times where I couldn't fit into the shirt very well, but I've been working on that. Breck nineteen ninety six, state football champions, Kevin Cannon, the artist, pretty nice piece of art.